Hello everyone. So we are going to be continuing about the headache. We have already discussed about the primary causes of headache. Now we are going to continue with the discussion of secondary causes of headache. So let us begin actually. So as we have already said, secondary causes of headache, they are the causes in which the headache or uh, developed due to an underlying pathology actually, right? Due to an underlying pathology. So the one of the uh, causative agent is we have meningitis meningitis we have subarachnoid hemorrhage then we have tumor then we have a kind of uh, uh, in idiopathic idiopathic intra cranial hypertension then we have intra cranial venous intra cranial venous thrombosis so in all this actually as we can uh, see they actually cause the headache due to occupying space in the brain due to an occupying space in the brain because anything that can lead to occupy uh, space occupying in the cranium because the cranium can no longer we have another one called hydrocephalus also hydrocephalus so <clears throat> in this anything that may increase volume of the uh, of the cranium can definitely lead to headache why because now the cranium the cranium cannot expand so if it cannot expand, the moment something starts to grow or start to expand inside the head will cause headache, right? Because the now the, the cranium cannot occupy the the new growth of something or accommodation of something in the in the in the brain actually or in the cranium. So that is it. So now we are going to talk about number one, which is called the meningitis. So meningitis actually is kind of inflammation or infection of the meninges actually. And uh, the most common cause we have, that is the etiology, is infection. And that infection can be due to bacteria called Neisseria meningitis, from the word meningitis, meningitis. We have, in, in neonate, we have Streptococcus agalactiae, uh, or group B Streptococcus, let me use the, the term, group B strep, in neonate. We have even cryptococcus neopormans that can also need to lead to a uh, kind of cryptococcus cryptococcus neopormans this also lead to meningitis there are so many uh, actually infect, uh, infectious agents that lead to this uh, meningitis actually but most importantly we need to know this and this special but this cryptococcus and then other fungus mostly they cause this meningitis in uh, actually in in immunocompromised but this can even cause it in immunocompetent individuals actually and then what our concern is not the not the, the the deep detail about each disease but the symptoms because these videos are actually done in order to give us a hint in the subsequent video of diagnosis that is in the head uh, in the headache history taken so the symptoms we have a kind of uh, throbbing sensation, throbbing sensation of the head of the head that is throbbing pain, right? And also generalized, it is even generalized, throbbing sensation and generalized. Let me put the generalized here, generalized. And then this kind of headache is actually because why in meningitis we will have a kind of space occupying that is, we will have increase in intracranial pressure is because. The infiltration that is because there is uh, a kind of vasodilation and then increase in inter infiltration of uh, uh, inflammatory cytokines and whatsoever, then that effusion of fluid will definitely accumulate in the in the cranium, right? Then increasing the intracranial pressure. That is it. And then the the symptom actually will be we have neck stiffness, neck stiffness because of the irritation of the meninges. We also have kind of fever right 
who also have kind of photophobia photophobia those who uh, uh, those who actually have this meningitis are actually having uh, make their their pain worsen by 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 light they don't like light actually so that is it so and then we may can find a kind of rashes depending on the bacteria or the infectious agent that causes that kind of meningitis actually so that is it so then the second one we have subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage hemorrhage so in this subarachnoid hemorrhage actually this is a kind of occur due to rupture of a kind of basal in the cycle of bullies because most of the time it is spontaneous and then 85 percent of that uh, spontaneous spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage is due to rupture of aneurysm due to rupture of aneurysm because around the cycle of bullies we are having a kind of sometimes some people some people actually develop a kind of aneurysm that is dilatation and then weakening of the wall of some vessels in the cycle of bullies so that one are prone to rupture because their wall is weakened and then the wall is dilated right is dilated so they, pr they are prone to get ruptured if they ruptured then the patient will experience a kind of sudden and abrupt severe headache because the moment they rupture the moment they will present the, present the headache so that's why that's why it is even the symptoms is symptoms occur due to actually uh, occur uh, as present with a kind of tender cleft tender cleft headache because it is severe and then sudden not gradually gradually but sudden the headache will develop due to that rupture that's why it is even termed as the thunder cleft someone will just experience as if someone kicked his head right do you understand so that, that is it and then there is loss of consciousness because the bleeding is intracranial the, there is expanding hematoma inside that is loss of consciousness consciousness and then the patient may the resident intracranial pressure will even reach the extent that the patient will can even develop a kind of seizure so that is it and then some the patient develop fever actually but not that much common but they develop fever so let us put fever so that is it and then the patient actually can develop a kind of uh, 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 um, visual problem especially because if you observe the the pupil of the eye you kind of see a kind of purple edema due to uh, uh the expanding intracranial pressure so that is it you may experience purple edema on pondoscopy so and so on and so forth so that is it so now we are going to discuss about the next one so we have tumor tumor depending on what type of tumor tumor actually can also lead to uh because as the tumor is growing growing we know that depending on the type of the tumor but no matter how fast a tumor can grow cannot grow in a kind of one day it take uh, several weeks months and be growing slowly slowly or whatsoever so if as the tumor is growing then the headache are increasing actually right the headache is increasing as the tumor, that's why the patient will said this headache i'm experiencing it since last month or oh, since last two months but it keep on increasing gradually gradually the headache every day is increasing because every day the tumor is increasing in size right so that is depending on the speed at which the tumor is expanding so the patient will a kind of experience because the tumor of course the headache due to increase in the intracranial pressure so that is it but this is sudden abrupt because the moment the blood vessel rupture then the blood will actually accommodated in the cranial cavity and then causes the increase in intracranial pressure then idiopathic intracranial hypertension this is this idiopathic let me abbreviate idiopathic intracranial hypertension they termed it as another name called pseudo tumor pseudo tumor cerebral because it is idiopathic if you check the brain you will not see tumor but it is presenting as if tumor is in the brain that's why it is even called pseudo tumor it is not tumor but it is a kind of uh, uh, kind of the symptom the, the patient will present with symptom of increasing intracranial pressure so 
so this patient will have a kind of headache especially when waking in the morning headache especially when waking in the morning after waking in the morning after waking up waking up in the in early morning so any person that comes to you and said i used to have headache every day in the morning so just think about space occupying living like tumor like this intracranial uh, idiopathic intracranial hyper uh, hypertension just think about something that me that is there sitting in the brain and most of them they even said that this headache actually it is wasn't by any factor that may increase the icp wasn't with with coughing sneezing lifting lifting load for example if they are carrying a kind of heavy things because as you are carrying heavy things you are going to create a kind of uh, pressure in there in your intracranial pressure because you will develop a kind of for you to lift a lot or to duplicate during duplicate even up during duplication during duplication and during lifting of blood the patient undergo a kind of balsal bar maneuver they they compress their, their abdomen their abdominal muscle kind of compressed they are against their wall they they, they, they are onset right that's called the basal bar maneuver this increase the intracranial pressure even normally at, in a normal person the intracranial pressure used to rise also during coughing sneezing also the intracranial pressure used to rise a bit so in someone who is having a tumor in his head or a kind of meningitis or a kind of anything that is space occupying is occupying the space or in this subarachnoid hemorrhage or in this idiopathic whatsoever so this patient will say that the moment i lift cough sneeze or lifting a lot of duplication i used to have a kind of headache the headache wasn't by that kind of uh, things so that is it and then the patient that are at risk the cause it is unknown but the risk factor is obese woman obese a obese lady or obese woman if he is obese if she if she is obese especially if she is taking a drug called tetracycline so that is it then we have uh, another kind of uh, factors that may lead to this uh, de- this secondary headache. So the next one we have temporal arthritis. Temporal arthritis. This temporal arthritis mostly it is seen in elderly uh, women actually elderly like over sixty years, sixty five, sixty sixty six years of age for, for example. Then this actually occur due to it is a kind of vasculitis inflammation of the temporal artery so due to that inflammation of the temporal artery actually they are going to be occluding in the lumen of that particular temporal artery so if there is occlusion due to that inflammation happening in the temporal artery then the muscle that is supplied by that temporal artery for example the temporalis muscle so will get little amount of blood right if it get little amount of blood then definitely the 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 it will be going to be a kind of having pain right so that is it so due to impl- the vasculitis a kind of vasculitis seen in elderly and then the muscular muscle are going to be having a kind of pain this pain of temporal arthritis is going to be worsen with uh with chewing so the pen the headache is wasn't with was chewing wasn't with chewing that is masticating chewing food because that mu- muscle of mastication are getting little amount of blood so as the moment you are using them to chew food then the headache will going to be wasn't get wasn't right so that is it so and this is seen in actually elderly and also this arthritis is affecting also the retinal arteries so the patient will be complaining of blindness or trouble with their vision so this is the most important complication to be concerned with this blindness so that's why you have to address this temporal arteries with a kind of steroid to, to to prevent the, the the complication of blindness so that is it then we have another uh, cause which is called we have thrombosis it, uh, intracranial venous thrombosis intracranial venous thrombosis This intracranial venous thrombosis, let us see a kind of picture here. This is the picture. 
frog. This is uh, venous sinuses. This is thrombus, tr uh, tr transbus. This is threat. This is sigmoid sinuses that drain into jugular vein, internal jugular vein. So these sinuses they are found in the cranium. Actually, this is spherosagittal sinus. So sometime in a susceptible individual, they may develop a kind of thrombosis here. That is thrombus formation in the, in 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 the uh, in, in depending on the which sinus is affected. So what causes this thrombus is hypercoagulability of blood. For example, gluten factor disorder. Gluten factor disorder because someone may have problem in their anticoagulant so if there's pro if you have problem in anticoagulation system then the coagulation that is the procoagulant will now going to be uh, uh, forming a kind of thrombus if you have problem with your uh, a kind of uh, procoagulant now the anti thrombotic factors will going to supervene then that's overwhelm the activity of that malfunction procoagulant so then they, your blood can no longer coagulate so that is it so now in this patient they have problem with their anticoagulation factors or the coagulation factors that is the coagulation factors cannot be inhibited by the anticoagulation factors so that's why the, the blood is at high risk of developing that thrombus especially in this uh, venous sinus thrombus in the vein so that is it and also dehydration because if you get dehydrated the coagulation factors are now concentrated right for example in a cup of tea if by any means you can withdraw the water and left the sugar inside, the sugar will now become very, very tasty, right? Very, very concentrated. So, so as in the patient who is dehydrated can get a kind of concentrated gluten factors, then the gluten factors will now make the blood to coagulate. And then in lady could take in oral contraceptive. Because oral contraceptive actually causes increase in the production of gluten factors. So these gluten factors can lead to uh, thrombosis. So that is it. So this uh, lead to intracranial venous thrombosis and then this may also lead to this kind of headache. Then the last kind of headache we are going to talk is kind of cranial neuralgia. Cranial neuralgia. This cranial neuralgia, the, from that neuralgia the pain is due to damage to the kind of nerves, in the, especially in the occipital region. Especially in occipital region. Not temporal, not parental, but in occipital region, there are some kind of nerves there. So if that these nerves become damaged, so definitely the patient will be experiencing a kind of burning pain, severe burning pain. So this is kind of also.